Hey there guys, this is Reckles with Want to Buy Gold, and welcome to day five of the 20 days of gold making challenge. Um, we, student, just announced that he's on board too, so I'm hyped. Thank you guys for bugging him. Now go bug old Bess, because we need him to join. So, today's question is, do you keep the same banker alt, or do you change them up occasionally, and why? I'm going to take this opportunity to kind of, I'm going to answer the question, but I'm also just going to give some tips about bank alts that I figure you might need to know. So for those of you who don't have a bank alt or only have one and this question seems really weird, why would you change up your bank alt? Um, there's a couple of reasons. One, you know, the the most obvious is, you know, like, you have a mage as your bank tune, and you know what? You want to play mage because mage is super OP in raiding or in PvP, and you, you have that tune, so you level it up. So, let's start this off with an anatomy of the perfect bank tune. Yes! First off, it would be a level 9 tune. You don't want to have your bank all as level one because if you ever trade anything with someone having a level one is just kind of awkward and feels like a, a scam so if you have a level nine tune they know you put some work into the tune uh you want it to not have a name related to your main or any of your mains because there are some times where you'll want to be discreet and by that i mean uh like there was one time where I was trying to sell shirts. Now this is before the transmog system where shirts actually sold without too much of a hassle. But I went and I got some of the Dalaran shirts, posted them up on the auction house on my main tune for I think 400 or 500 gold. And then I went on another tune of mine and said in trade chat like looking to buy shirts. And then I logged back over to my main and said, like, I got him up on the auction house for 500 gold. And then I logged over to my banker and said, hey, I'll sell you the shirts for 250. So I was just talking to myself here, but I sold, I think, two of each shirt for 200. It wasn't two. I didn't get 250. I, I, they haggled me down to 200. But I made some decent gold that day. So there's fun little things you can do in the WoW markets that would be totally illegal if you did it in in real life. But I couldn't do that if I didn't have the discretion of having different uh, tune names. So um, also ideally you'd want your tune to have uh, special characters in the name. So uh, you know the, the alt code things with the little umlauts and things like that. Uh, you want that because then people can't search for you to see what markets you're in and you know when they can undercut you. It makes it hard for them to add you to a friends list on Battle.net or search for you on the Undermine Journal, things like that. And along those lines, this is, this is getting into some advanced stuff, but uh, change out what pets you use on that tune because one way you can identify a competitor's alt is by going on the battle net profile of that person and checking to make sure the battle pet team of that alt is the same as the battle pet team of the main. And if it's different, then it's probably not the same person. So mix it up a little bit. And then rounding everything out, back to the question, uh, do you change them? Uh, the, the final reason why you'd want to change a tune is because over time, people add competitors, add the, the high rollers to their friends list. They don't add you to the Battle.net friends list, they add you to like just by the character. And you can even download add-ons, like I, I think it's called Friend Sort, or Sort Friends, or Friend Organizer, something like that. But it's a, it's a Battle.net friends list organizer add-on in WoW have all your competitors on your friends list so you know when they log in. So you know, for instance, a Tommy the G just logged in. He's a jewel crafter, so he always posts up all the gems. And so then whenever you see him log off, you know you can go log on to your posting tune, undercut him immediately. So he only gets three minutes, five minutes tops on the auction house before he gets undercut. So that's some of the sneaky stuff you can learn when all the high rollers are on and just immediately undercut them. But if every three to six months you delete that tune and create a new one, 
with you know a different theme around the name of the tune, uh, then uh, people won't ever know who it is. They'll just know that someone new entered the market. Oh, the market's getting flooded. They better leave. So those are my tips. As for me personally, uh, no, no, I don't, I don't follow any of those because I'm a hoarder and I have an emotional connection to my tune and he looks like a lumberjack and I love him. So I'm probably not ever going to delete him. So that's, that's kind of the other thing. Like you don't need to be super secret and sketchy and stalking all your competition in order to make gold. You can let them undercut you. And as long as you're in a lot of different markets, you're good. They're, no one else is going to compete with you on everything all the time. Just relax and go put in some work, guys, and you'll make the gold. All right, all right. I'm going to go. Talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.